Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing great. I feel like this video is long overdue and a lot of people have been asking me to film this but I felt like um, being on the show took really a big toll on me, on my mental health and I didn't feel like I wanted to talk about it ever but now I feel like my life is completely different from what it was a few years ago when I was on 90 Day Fiancé so I thought that it's a good time to watch some old episodes and react to them and tell you what was real, what was not, what was actually going on behind the scenes so I downloaded some clips that I could find on YouTube and let's just get straight to it I'm going to play clips and comment on them, maybe pause sometimes and explain things to you so let's go here is the first one on a car there has to be a limit 10,000 per month? <laughs> don't make me laugh then I guess we're not good be reasonable this is just a part of the episode that I could find on YouTube I think if you watch the whole episode um, you remember that there was a conversation that I told him that I wanted to be a model and he said that something like along the lines that a woman should stay at home and I said okay well if I stay at home then you could give me an allowance and one thing I should have mentioned before we even got into it is that I have this um, I guess I would say weird sense of humor um, I'm very sarcastic and I like deadpan jokes so I feel like it didn't translate very well to some people and to me it was fun saying things that are kind of extravagant and you know play up this common stereotype that a lot of people have about Russian women so that's what I was doing just playing up the stereotype so when he asked me how much you want per month I just said 10,000 because sounds crazy right so let's go to the next one um, this was when we went wedding dress shopping and that was very interesting place why what about price point what are you comfortable with uh, what is your most expensive dress <laughs> um our most expensive dress would be forty five thousand dollars okay here i wanted to pause because you could clearly see there was a cut between the lady asking me um what wait what was it uh, what is your most expensive what are you comfortable with uh, yeah when she asked about the price point and then i asked her what was the most expensive dress it wasn't uh the conversation wasn't didn't go like that but i did ask her at one point just out of curiosity what was your most expensive dress just because why not i just want to know what is the most expensive dress just curious that's it not because i wanted it because i also explained that i wanted a dress that would like hug my curves really nice and if you remember me trying on this the most expensive dress it was like a big whatever that wasn't even what I wanted but then um, they made it look like that was the dress that I wanted I didn't even want to try it on because when I saw it I knew it, it was not even what I wanted but I had to try it on because that's what producers wanted now this one is one of everyone's favorite moments basically saying that you're just dating me because I can buy you things yes Okay, here, like I said, playing up the stereotype, like asking me if I would, if I only date him because he can buy me things. And I say, yes, I mean, is it funny? I guess not. Uh, okay, this is one of my personal favorites, so. I'll call you back in just a few No. I'm literally making a deal for $15,000 and you're really up. I don't get Okay, so here, after this episode aired, people were mad at me because they were like, oh my god, you don't even let him work. But I hope now you guys can see what kind of work my ex-husband was doing. And in fact, I was being um, caring and trying to protect him from doing something illegal. He could have, you know, went to prison way earlier if I was not, you know, trying to talk some sense into him and stop him from doing this $15,000 deals behind Dollar Tree stores okay next one I think this episode kind of finally showed another side of um, our whole relationship 
and sh finally that's when the story started um kind of turning maybe i exaggerated a little bit to anfisa about how much money i had but i spent everything i had trying to impress her so i think that was like one of a very few things that were true that were said by my ex-husband so now next one everyone loves the next one but to me it was really stressful as you can hear <laughs> And Fisa got mad at me because I left her and I tried to go see the lawyer alone. I mean, no shit. This situation happened um, within the first months or two months of me being in the United States. So we're not married. I don't have a green card. I don't have a car. I'm in a foreign country. And he told me he was going to the parking garage for like a few minutes to get something from the car. I don't think I even knew that the filming crew was there. So okay, he goes to the garage, 5 minutes passes, 10 minutes passes, 15 minutes passes, and he's still not back. So I'm like, okay, something's going on. And our relationship was already not going very well. We had a lot of arguments because the previous um, part that I showed you when I found out that things weren't really um, as he portrayed them to be. So I can say that for the first about a year, I wasn't feeling very great mentally. So that really stressed me out when I, um, when he just left. And how do you do that to someone? How do you just leave without saying where you're going and disappearing for like a few hours? I don't think it's okay. Maybe, you know, I shouldn't have screamed so much, but I definitely wasn't feeling very good, so. What is the problem? I am coming back. I am coming back. No. <laughs> I decided to cancel and go back to Anfisa because she was just acting crazy. She was just acting crazy. That's what every man who fucks up ever says. So is here. I love this one. What do you think is the most important thing in a relationship? Money. Money? I said love. Are you deaf? Okay, here, I mean, it was clearly a joke that I made. I was being sarcastic. So, it's crazy to me how some people could not see this sarcasm. And um, I have one more thing that I want to react to. But I it needs some um, preface to it. So, as you know, George and I are no longer together. To give you the exact timeline, we got married in 2016 and got divorced last year, 2020. And in 2018, he got caught in Arizona with 300 pounds of weed in his car. So he went to prison for two years. Um, so our relationship were not going very well for a very long time, even before he went to prison. However, when he got arrested, and went to prison, I still tried to make it work because I felt like it was the right thing for me to do and I didn't want to leave him alone in that situation. But then, again, I didn't feel like it was right for me because he, in the past, he cheated on me, he never stood up for me in front of anyone, he lied to me, so I thought even though he is in this situation, it is not my fault that he ended up in prison even though some people tried to put it on me saying that he was trying to make money to make me happy and i pushed him to do this however what about his previous felonies that he had when he was like 19 and 20. um nobody has answered to that i just couldn't do it anymore because we were so different and i felt like you know i'm gonna be better off alone and he will be better off alone or with somebody else last time we were on the show together was in 2018 and then in 2020 about a month before he was getting out of prison 
he did this little 90 day fiance self quarantine um, feature where he talked about his time in prison and our relationship so i wanted to react to that i'm going to play the whole thing it's only about two or three minutes long and i'm going to pause it if i need to and explain okay let's go one of the first things that i had to deal with was kind of leaving my family and leaving my relationship behind and that was hard that was very difficult the last time i saw Nafisa was the day before i got incarcerated the night before i came to prison we had an argument things were just not going well i thought that i was gonna yep that's true we didn't have an argument it was some stupid fight um and things were not going well try to make things work and they did it and um that was it probably about two months after i was in prison you know she basically told me that uh that she couldn't be with me anymore and telling me well here's where the lies start he says two months after he went to prison i told him that i couldn't be with him anymore that is not true he went to prison in 2018 and i stopped talking to him in summer 2019 so that's definitely not two months however um I also have a proof of that however i think he did say it because of his current girlfriend that's probably when he started talking to her um maybe she sent him letters to pre in prison or something like that so he just wants to make it look nice in front of her saying that he was not talking to me but that's not true or telling me that she wished that i got 12 years in prison basically trying to get rid of me we still talked on the phone so this moment i got a lot of hate when this aired and people were like oh my god you told him you wished him 12 years in prison first of all i have never said that even um when he got arrested i had a video on my youtube channel that is now unlisted but we made a video talking about his arrest and i even said that i think his sentence was excessive and i still think so however um he knew that the punishment could be from zero to 24 years and so one of the times when we were talking on the phone he was complaining how it's so unfair that he's in prison and it's just annoyed me because i mean you did the crime and now you're in prison so what are you complaining about and i just told him that he should be glad that he did not get 12 years maybe it sounds harsh However, it is true. You did the crime, you did the time. They're basically trying to get rid of me. We still talked on the phone. I would try to work on the relationship no matter what. Like, I tried. So right now we, we are technically legally married, but I ended up finding out through the internet that uh, she was actually with somebody else. That is true i did start dating somebody else however i told george that i do not want to be with him we weren't talking for a few months maybe he didn't get the memo but i think as long as i told him i'm free to date whoever i want plus he is the one right now having his girlfriend pregnant so i highly highly doubt that um I was the one getting in another relationship first. And that definitely hurt. It really broke my heart. Like there's really no way for me to do anything from in here. Like I, I couldn't call her because she blocked my calls and it was just a mess. This is also not true. I did not block his calls. He did not call me after I told him that I didn't want to be with him. But that's the past and I overcame that. It definitely made me stronger. Now that I've gone past that point, I've got to see all of the negatives that I was going through in my life and I'm better off alone. You know, I, I basically was willing to do anything for love, even give up my freedom. Okay, this part really bothered me, he says. Uh, I was willing to do anything for love, even give up my freedom. What does this have to do with love? That's really 
upsetting for me that they he tries to make it seem like like somehow he ended up in prison because of me when that was what he was doing he was doing he has been doing this illegal whatever for years and he had been to prison before that so and I won't be surprised that he ends up in prison again so yeah that is our story um, and yes when he got out of prison he did file for a divorce and now we're finally divorced and I just want to tell everyone that you shouldn't believe everything you see on that reality show because it's not really real for me my goal um, one of the things that I always wanted to do since I moved here is to continue my education because I never finished university in Russia and I did mention it on the while we were recording for the show, but I guess it wasn't dramatic enough, wasn't interesting enough to make it on the air. However, if you have been following me, you know what I've been up to. You know that I graduated community college and now I go to UCI to get my bachelor's degree and you know that I have my own place. I just, I got um, my car two years ago and I just upgraded it and I got a different car, so the car tour is coming. I never had a sugar daddy. I got the car on my own, I pay my own rent, I pay my own bills. So this whole gold digger sugar baby thing was um, very exaggerated and I helped it, I played it up for the show because I thought that was going to be interesting and it was still two years since I was on the show. People still talk about me, so I guess that's good. I guess that's all that I wanted to share with you today. I know I was thinking about some more episodes that I wanted to react to, but I couldn't find the videos on YouTube. So um, if you want a part two, then send me links to the episodes that you want me to react to. And I guess I might do a part two for now. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in my next video. I hope you're still here because I forgot to mention one more thing. Um, this video was in no way meant to bash my ex-husband. I don't hold any grudges. Okay, maybe just a tiny little bit. But I feel like right now both of us are happier. He, um, hopefully he found someone who is a better fit for him than I was. And I definitely have upgraded my life so much. And I don't think it would be possible without that relationship because I learned a lot of lessons. So... I don't even regret anything that happened. I don't regret being in a relationship with him. I don't regret being on the show because at the end of the day, it made me the person that I am today. And I'm really proud of this person that I am today.